we don't need data scientists. We need people who understand, who can work with data, but who under also understand uh, like the politics, the ethics, uh, also the history of data, or at least teams of people who collectively have the understanding. Um, so increasingly, this is, it's really about like matching these capacities. But to do that, the first thing is that you need to realize that it's not about hiring um, the young kid who graduated with BA or a BS uh, or BSc from, uh, from whatever university in, a, in data science. I think you're going to see, you know, every NGO is going to have a, a data scientist employed on their stuff. I think that's great. I think it's really exciting. I think there's going to probably be increasing collaboration between different types of organizations who work with data. So, you know, NGOs, CBOs maybe will have their own data scientists or a kind of a data expert or a data intermediary, right? Maybe they're not a data uh, scientists themselves, but they know how to reach out and talk to and translate the data, uh, taking it down to kind of community groups where you're not going to have statistical, statistical literacy or maybe even literacy, so people are going to need some kind of intermediary. You know, it's definitely the case at the moment that there are two camps that you have, the quant people who, you know, can read a spreadsheet and manipulate it, and the people who work on the kind of the subject areas, the health experts, the, the education experts. But I think you're already starting to see those barriers come down. I see a lot of organizations really beefing up their capacity. Um, I think what we've got to be careful of, of course, is that tendency to compete into silos so that we all have to have our own yeah. analytical capacity rather than using some of the big global vehicles for, for analytics, all of us, um, and feeding into that because that's where the social transformation can take place.